Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're covering a complete beginner's guide to the new Outlook on Windows. It's been a while since we've made this video and there have been some recent changes to Outlook. If you wanna see more Outlook related tutorials, be sure to stay tuned as we plan to release intermediate and advanced Outlook videos in the future. Before we get started with today's video, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 10, Windows 11, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so I'm here on Windows 11 on my desktop, and let's just go ahead and start with opening the Outlook application. If I hit my Windows Start key here, I can simply type in Outlook, and depending on, you might see an option for Outlook Classic if you have a purchased version of Office, but again, for this tutorial, we're using Outlook New, and so we're gonna double click into this. Once we're here, we're prompted to enter our email address. So I'm going to enter an email that I want connected to my Outlook account. Now, again, it's gonna support Outlook, Gmail, Yahoo, iCloud, IMAP, and Pop. So as long as your email is supported, it doesn't necessarily have to be an Outlook email. I'll be using my Gmail account for this. Let's hit continue. Here we're getting prompted to sync our emails, calendar, events, and contacts. And we can go ahead and grant permission by hitting continue. This is going to automatically bring up our web browser and I'm gonna to click to sign into my Gmail account. This might look a little bit different depending on which email you have. Let's press continue. And then right here, I'm gonna select all. So we want all of these selected and I'll press continue again. And finally, we can press open Outlook new right here. All right, and we'll give this just a moment to load. For this option, you can choose whichever you'd like. I generally prefer not to send optional data. I'll press accept and continue. Okay, and then here we're getting prompted to apply our already existing Windows settings. So for example, I have the dark mode applied in Windows. And if I hit apply settings here, it's going to automatically apply my language, time, and other settings from Windows. And this is a generally good idea if you'd like to. So I'll go ahead and hit apply settings. All right, guys, so here we are inside of Outlook. And by default, we're gonna be in what's called the home tab. Now, if you're familiar with Office applications, you'll notice that there are a few different tabs that we can click to. So we have home and view and help in this case. And then beneath that we have ribbons. And the ribbon is basically this little strip here of different tools. And the tools are gonna to be separated by groups which are signified with these little lines here. So the way that they design this application, we can find similar tools that relate to each other in these groups. And they are again, categorized by their tab. We see this little button right here to the left of home. This is going to reveal or hide this little side panel here, and this is gonna have our various email folders. Now, we also have another navigation pane here on the left. This gives us an option to go to our calendar, basically a separate page in this version of Outlook. We could also go down one to people. This is where we can access our contacts. And then below that, if you have other Office applications installed, we can actually access them directly from here. Lastly, we have another option here called More Apps, and here's where we can find things like OneNote. For now, let's focus on the Mail tab and let's stay in the Home tab. Let's explore a few ways that we can sort through our various inboxes. So we can see I'm currently in the Inbox folder here, and we're in what's called a Focus tab. We could also go to Other, and this is gonna be more spam-related emails. So back in the Focus tab, I can select emails by hitting this little Select button here. So for example, if I wanna delete several emails, I could grab these three. And with them selected, we now have these options available. So I could do something like archive or delete or flag. Let's go ahead and delete these. And we can see that those have been deleted. I can hit this button to open the select or close that at any time. And we also have filter. So I can filter by unread, flagged, has files, or has calendar invites. Now we could also sort it by date. It's currently sorted by date, but we could change that to who it's from, size, importance, or subject. We could also put oldest on top if we'd like. Now with an email selected, again, we have delete, archive, we could flag. Notice these little drop down arrows here, and these are gonna give us more options that relate to a specific tool. So for flag, I can flag today, tomorrow, next week, or no date. And for delete, I could also ignore an email. Here we have the pin or unpin. So I could pin this email to the top, and now it's separated from my other emails. I could also select an email and maybe snooze it to tomorrow if I want to be reminded of it. 
So that is the general layout of the Home tab. And again, we can click to go to various different folders. I can also use these arrows to hide or reveal these folders as well. If we wanted to add an additional account, we can also access that right here. Now that we've covered the Home tab and some of these various tools, let's go over to the View tab and see what we can do here. Let's click View Settings. This gives us an option for how we may want to change our layout. Let's say I don't want Outlook to decide what matters most. I can select Don't Sort My Messages. All right, and once you're happy with your settings, if you want to make those settings apply, we would hit Save. So we can hit Save here, and now we can just see my inbox. Before I leave settings, let's cover some of the other settings that we have access to. We can change our Compose and Reply settings. For example, I could change the format. We can change our default font size or style. We also have cut, copy, and paste, and many other settings in terms of composing and replying. Here we have smart suggestions, attachments, conditional formatting. We have customizing actions. And we also have message handling and subscriptions. In addition to that, we have a general tab. This is going to give us language and time and other general settings that we can change at any time. This is also where we could change our appearance. For example, maybe I want to go to a light appearance. I could go ahead and change that here. I could also do dark or system settings. We also have notifications, accessibility, and many other general settings. Next up, we have accounts. So similar to how we can add accounts on the left-hand side here, we can also change that from here. I can always manage and remove accounts from the settings as well. All right, and then we have some calendar settings. Here we can change what the work week is, as well as some other general calendar settings. And lastly, we have some people settings as well. All right, clicking out of that, let's go back to our view tab here. So again, we have settings. These are also accessible from here in the top right. Below that, we have messages. And this is going to give us some different view options for our conversations, as well as message preview. We also have light reading pane or dark reading pane. And this is what it looks like when we change that. I'll go ahead and keep mine as dark for now. Here we have an option to sync sent and received email. We also have some layout options. So for example, I could go back to the classic ribbon if I want to see that way. If you like the simplified ribbon, then we can go back to that. We also have some folder pane and density options. Okay, and then in the help tab here, we can access the classic outlook if we wanted to open that. That would basically switch us to that application. We also have help, tips, support, feedback, diagnostics, and mobile, all accessible from here. Now, if you notice in the top, we also have a search bar. The search bar is going to help us search for emails. So here I can see all of my Google emails. Now, in the top right here, if I click on this, we have a quick access view to our calendar. I can also view notifications, and again, I can go to my settings. Let's take a look at the calendar page. We can create a new event by hitting this blue button here, which brings up this. And here, it's pretty simple. We could add a title. We could add attendees if we want. Here I have response options and calendar options. And I could also, for example, get a reminder 30 minutes before if I wanted to change that. Here I can make this private or public. And then right here, I can change the date. Let's go ahead and make it this Thursday from, let's say, 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. If I want, I could make this recurring. And I could add a description if I want here. All right, and then sending this will also add it to my own calendar, which we can see right here. We could change the calendar view to show seven days instead of just one. Or we could also go to the week or month view here. We can also filter by appointments, meetings, or other categories. And we have a print option from here as well. Now, as we can see, we have my current calendar here. We could also add calendars as well. All right, let's go down to the People tab. So from here, we can access our contacts. Let's say I want to make a new contact. All right, and let's say I want to add myself. I can type my name here and my email address. I could add another email address or a phone number if I want. And I could also add a company and a few other things. And once I'm happy with my contact, I can go ahead and hit save. And that's going to create a contact that's going to be saved here. And as we can see, I have access to this contact now. I can directly email them if I would like to. I could also call. And this contact will be saved for any time I need to access it in the future.
All right, guys, so going back into the mail tab, I just wanted to cover a few extra things before we wrap up the video. I'm gonna filter for has files, and let's go ahead and see some things that have attachments. Okay, here we can see this email here has an attachment. I have a few options if I click this arrow next to an attachment. This one here is an Excel document. I can directly open this in Excel. I could preview this. This is gonna give me a preview of the spreadsheet. Now, I could also save as if I just simply want to download it. And maybe I save that to my downloads and press save. And now I can access that locally on my computer. And then of course we have reply or reply all or forward options inside of each email. And we can always easily compose a new email from right here in the top left. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything that we covered, feel free to drop those in the comments down below and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll leave those links down below. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas to make. We strongly encourage you to comment those down below. Most subscriber video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.